Happy people forgive, but they don't forget. Everybody makes mistakes. You can expect the people in your life to let you down from time to time, even if they don't mean to. You've probably said or done things that created a negative experience for people you care about. These things happen. Nobody's perfect. It's one of the reasons why you should learn to forgive others when they cause you harm in some way. They're imperfect, just like you. Even if they went out of their way to cause you misery, forgiveness makes you feel better than holding a grudge. This is what notoriously happy people do. They understand that harboring negative feelings is like renting out space in your brain to unhappiness. It doesn't make any sense. If something bad happens in your life, let it go. Forgive whoever you need to forgive. Any time spent harboring negative emotions is an unnecessary waste of time that you could have devoted to feeling happy instead. If you do that, you are consciously allowing stress in your life, and stress can lead to severe physical and mental health problems. Forgiveness leads to happiness, as long as you don't embrace forgetfulness. Imagine that a very dear friend says something that hurts you deeply. You can't believe what you heard. You ask him what he said, and he repeats it clearly, word for word, to make sure you understand him. You know he's aware that such a statement would hurt your feelings, and you're having a hard time processing this blatant disregard for your emotions. As soon as the moment's over, you leave the environment. You're going to be the bigger person and not respond negatively in some way. A day later, after you've calmed down, you call your friend. You tell him that your relationship is important to you. You forgive him, and he says he won't let it happen again, apologizing profusely. You feel great about what you did. You traded in negative feelings for positive emotions. It's at this point where you need to do something very important. Relive the moment that made you angry. It hurt you emotionally. Think about it. Visualize it happening again in your mind's eye. You're not doing this so you can bring it up later, but rather so you won't forget. Happy people forgive easily. They additionally have great memories. If someone hurts you in some way and you forgive them, what's to say it won't happen again? If the offender harms you again in the future, then that's one time too many. Divorce yourself from that relationship. You owe yourself the best possible life. That means not allowing people to see you as an emotional doormat. Be strong. Stick up for yourself. Forgive easily, but don't ever forget. This will lead to more happiness in your life, as well as more positive people in it. How to Hack Your Hormones for Heaping Helpings of Happiness Some people never seem to be able to frown. Every time you see them, they're smiling. What's wrong with them? Should you be a little wary of these people? Not necessarily. After all, everybody has down times occasionally, right? They might not have a perpetual smile on their face, but they encounter negative life experiences just like you. That may be true. Even so, there are people in life who choose to be happy in spite of anything negative that might be going on in their lives. What a truly wonderful ability that is. You could argue that choosing to embrace happiness and joy, even when times are bad, might be the greatest superpower of all. It doesn't allow you to let negativity invade your space. You still recognize that something bad has happened, either to you or to someone else but it doesn't change your outlook. You may respond in a way to address the negativity. If something bad happens to a friend, you're filled with concern and you rush to help. Even while you're addressing the problem at hand, you still have an upbeat and positive outlook. The people that constantly do this are either consciously or unconsciously hacking their happiness hormones. They're telling their brain to crank out keeping big helpings of feel-good chemicals, whether they know it or not. Your brain commands the production of certain chemicals and hormones. What's going on around you can affect what chemicals are produced. If you're in a very stressful situation, then levels of cortisol are going to skyrocket. This is called the stress hormone. It's linked to several physiological processes, including your survival instinct. If any of your five senses perceive a threat of any kind, your fight-or-flight instinct is triggered. Your heart starts racing. Your circulation improves, as does your respiratory rate. All of your senses are on high alert. You might find yourself adopting a combative physical posture if the threat is seen to be severe. Your entire body tries to reach its physical best because you've initiated a process that will either let you fight a threat or run away from it. When you perceive positive things, your brain starts pumping out dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. These are your happiness hormones. They instantly make you feel happier, more joyful, and content. You trade in stress for feelings of peace and calm. What can you do to hijack these hormones for more happiness? Here are a few suggestions. Exercise. Spend time with people that make you laugh and smile. Clean up a mess that's been bothering you. Play with your children or grandchildren. 
Take a trip down memory lane to remind yourself of the happiest times you've experienced. Express gratitude for the wonderful things in your life. Stop spending time with people that bring you down. Perform a random act of kindness. You probably notice a theme here. When you do things that make you feel good, your brain automatically rewards you with the production of hormones that promote happiness and pleasure. At the same time, levels of cortisol drop. This means that if you want more contentment and delight in your life, do things that make you smile. This is what habitually happy people do. It keeps them smiling and thinking positively, even when times get tough. If you try to change things out of your control, you'll be out of happiness. Wouldn't it be great to be in control of everything all the time? Think about it for a minute. You could control the weather so your backyard barbecue isn't canceled due to Mother Nature having a bad day. Your finances would always be in great shape. So would your body and your health. You could control your actions and the actions of others in every single aspect of your entire life. Your every experience would be positive and perfect. It's too bad that's not a possibility. Oh well, there's nothing wrong with daydreaming. The real world doesn't allow a single person to be in control of everything. That could turn ugly for everyone other than the individual if he woke up with a bad attitude one day. It's normal and natural for the human condition to have to go through your life out of control much of the time. That doesn't mean you should embrace a loss of control if you expect to be happy. Unfortunately, this truth isn't understood by some people. Focus on what you can control. Imagine that it's raining. You're playing golf with some friends and the rain comes out of nowhere. Your local weatherman said there wouldn't be a drop of rain all day, and now you have a torrential downpour. You and your friends are getting soaking wet as you run for shelter. In this imaginary scenario, try to exercise some control over the weather. Think deeply and put your thoughts out into the world. Make it stop raining with willpower. Bring the sun back out. Really try to make it happen. If you attempted this in this silly scenario or in real life, you would be equally unsuccessful. That's because you can't control what you can't control. Trying to influence people, places, and things you have little to no control over is frustrating. It's also pointless. You have no chance of success. You can get nothing but negative emotions as a reward for trying to change something you can't influence in any way. When you think about it, there's very little you can control. Doesn't it make more sense to concentrate on the few things you can influence rather than everything that's out of your control? This is what truly happy people do. They don't go out of their way to try to pound a square peg into a round hole. That's asking for unhappiness, frustration, and other negative emotions to come calling. Instead, look for what you can control, even in a negative situation. If you want to, you can always find the silver lining in the cloud, the controllable aspect of a tough experience. That mindset will lead to a lot more happiness in your life and less stress and anxiety. The Simple Social Habit to Boundless Happiness What does happiness mean to you? It might have a very different definition if you ask a number of people. That's because it's entirely objective. Your happiness depends on your personal values, belief systems, and dreams. Most everyone has goals which are attached to what they believe will make them happy. That just makes sense because who wants to take the time and effort to chase a goal if success means anything less than happiness? When we're not busily engaged in modern life, we try to find experiences which provide positive emotions. You might not have had the time to do that while you're working. If you have a busy day plan tackling a lengthy to-do list on your day off from work, there might not be much time for happiness hunting either. When free time presents itself, There's a simple social habit that can boost your feelings of joy, contentment, and satisfaction. Socialize with the right people. Be careful about who you spend your time with. Goal-achieving experts will tell you that the five people you associate with the most are going to be a lot like you. Smart financial planners suggest that your frequent companions are basically financial mirror images of yourself. This means your social circle influences your emotions, good or bad. You might be thinking that it's pretty simple advice to tell you to spend time with people that make you laugh. If this is such entry-level advice for more happiness, why aren't you doing it more frequently? There are probably times in your life when you consciously choose to be around people that don't promote positive feelings. Instead, even if you only have a few minutes, invest that social time with people who make you feel confident and positive. They're probably positive, confident people themselves. Texting your best friend only takes a minute or two. Even better, call them so you can hear their voice. If you find yourself spending too much time around people that bring you down, take a look at your relationships. It might be difficult, but you may have to spend less time with emotional vampires who steal your happiness, even if they are your close friends. Whatever you prioritize in your life is what's going to manifest itself. 
Prioritize spending time with people who make you feel upbeat, positive, and happy. The result is experiencing those feelings. Choose physical, person-to-person interaction when you can, because physical socializing has been proven to reduce stress and promote feelings of happiness. You smile more when you choose to see problems as opportunities. Happiness can mean different things to different people. Some might view spending some quality time with their family as something that delivers a lot of joy. Other people may prefer alone time with their significant other. We all have different ideas about what happiness means, but there's probably something we can all agree upon. The fewer problems in life, the better. Just like happiness, you might define the word problem differently than other people. The exact details might differ from one person to the next, but a common theme consistently appears. A problem is something that threatens to disrupt your potential happiness. Perhaps you've planned a vacation for a long time now. You're proud of yourself for saving up the money as well as the personal time your employer offers. In the past, you would take a day or two off as soon as you accrued that paid personal time, but not for a while. You've been putting away all those hours and days so you can take a much-needed vacation. The plans are made, everything's taken care of, and you get a smile on your face just thinking about jumping on that plane tomorrow and heading off to your dream destination. Your Uber ride to the airport was surprisingly quick and enjoyable. You moved swiftly through security and the booking process, and your terminal is nearby. And then, life showed up. You check your watch, you've arrived in plenty of time, just when it looks like your situation couldn't get any better, it gets worse instead. A combination of unforeseen and uncontrollable circumstances means you won't be going anywhere anytime soon. The weather went south. There was a bomb scare at the airport. The pilots used by the airline you chose decided to go on strike, and you had no warning that this would happen. You don't know whether to spend a couple of days sleeping and waiting at the airport like a lot of other people, or go home and play a frustrating waiting game. It's your choice to view this as a huge problem or a huge opportunity. This stinks. You were so looking forward to getting away from it all. Then you encountered all of these problems. Take a deep breath, calm down. This is out of your control, so why worry about it? Instead of miring in negativity and finding somewhere in the crowded terminal to sleep and wait out what could be an extended delay, why not go home instead? Think about what you can do instead of what you can't. You've been waiting for an opportunity to take your boat out. Now is the perfect time. You know that your best friend has a couple of days off, so why not give her a call? The two of you enjoy battling each other on the tennis court, and now is as good a time as any. You chose to see this big problem as a series of opportunities instead of just bad news. You can't control much of what happens in your life. What you can control is how you respond to what happens. Happiness is a choice. It's not something that exists outside of you that you have to obtain. It's entirely your choice to feel happy, sad, or any other emotion. Start reviewing problems as opportunities, and you're going to have a much happier and content life.